Hey, welcome back to the shop, everybody. I hope everyone's keeping safe and staying healthy. Let's build a can crusher. But first, a huge disclaimer. This is a very dangerous device. It will take your finger off. It has no built-in safety features. I build these for myself. I don't build them for anybody else. This is for my own use. So if you build one for yourself, please be careful with it. Um, I'll go over the basic components of how I build mine and you can take it from there. Um, just to give you an example why I have one of these and why it's so practical, even though it's a very unpract unpractical device. Uh, my last haul of cans was 81 pounds. So I came home with about $138, okay? To me, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, yeah, it took a while to save those cans, but they took up one full trash can of crushed cans. So anyway, um, let me bring you in and I'll talk about each individual component uh, and hopefully this will make it easier for you if you wanna build one for yourself. Okay, bear with me. I'm gonna try to give you as much detail as possible here uh, because it took me a while to figure all this out. Um, as many of you have seen my little can crusher, uh, I use that thing every single day and it, it took me a little bit to figure out how to do it and, and I'll show you that here a little later. But the heart of the whole build are these pneumatic cylinders. This particular cylinder is a three inch cylinder with a 12 inch ram. So in other words, this is gonna come out, this ram is, when it's actuated, it's gonna come out one, uh, one whole foot, okay? So depending what you're crushing, like my little one only has a six inch ram, so I can only crush smaller cans. This one's gonna have the capability, like the crusher cart, to crush the larger 24 ounce cans and uh, the larger water bottles, uh, plastic water bottles and stuff. So let me talk about these, this cylinder. Um, I find these on eBay. Um, this particular one ranges anywhere from 50 to $100, and these are used. Um, these are used in the automation industry, like car washes, conveyors, uh, things like that. And what's very important is you want a double acting cylinder, which means that it has two charge ports. One charge port, this one here, activates the RAM and pushes it out, okay? The other charge port retracts it, okay? So this is a double acting or dual acting uh, pneumatic cylinder. I like the Bimbas, the Bimba brand cylinders. They're stainless steel uh, tubing, uh, aluminum and pieces the the ram this particular ram is is pretty beefy so yeah it's going to last you a while um it's important that you get the double acting that's one thing i have to stress now the uh end this is an inch and a half uh 12 thread okay so you're going to need either a nut that's inch and a half 12 in this case this this was a real big nut and i cut it in half so I got two now. Um, this is to basically, I've already machined this part. Uh, this is gonna go on the end of your tube, okay? Uh, you know, let me talk about the tube. You could either use a piece of pipe. This one's totally overkill. It's 3 8 thick. I mean, you could get away with eighth inch thick. Uh, I like quarter. Uh, I think quarter is a uh, happy medium in the thickness range. You could also use a piece of four inch square tube. Uh, uh, cut out, just cut out the top, just like we're gonna do on this one. Okay, so basically you have two ends. You have the end that's gonna take the cylinder. So basically that's made for that and then your nut's gonna hold it on. Or if you have access to a lathe, you could, all, you could also do away with the nut and just machine and thread this piece, okay? So basically that's gonna go on there, the nut's gonna fix it, and of course this is going to be welded here, okay? So now you have the other end, which is gonna be the end that the, the cans get crushed in. So you're gonna have an exhaust port, and then you're gonna have an end cap. This is a piece of quarter inch plate, and that's gonna get welded to the end here, okay? Uh, you're gonna need some type of puck or crushing piece this is a piece of three inch uh, by inch and a quarter, I believe. 
and I tap, tapped it to uh, 5 8 18, because that's what the threads are on the end of this ram. And that threads onto here. Alrighty. So that's about it for the cylinder um, and the crushing tube. So let's talk about the uh, 2 5 valve. Uh, the reason it's called a 2 5 valve is because it has five ports, it has two charge ports. So basically, your air comes out of one of these depending on where this button is pushed. And it's got two exhaust ports. And this is your line pressure from your air compressor. So the air is going to come in here. One of these ports is charged at all times. So when, when, this, is when this button is pushed, it basically exhausts this port and charges this port. That's why you have to have, you can't have a closed loop. It has to have an uh, exhaust port for each charge port. So that's why it's called a 2-5 valve. Um, I added this spring on here, so it, so it returns on its own. Now, on my little can crusher, um, I have a, a, like a little shift lever, basically out and in. That's it, out and in. It's not spring-loaded. On the big daddy can crusher on the crusher cart, I have a foot pedal. So when you press the foot pedal, it actuates the cylinder, and then when you let go, uh, the exhaust ports are on the foot pedal. It exhausts and pulls the cylinder back in, or the ram back in. Okay, um, these are all 3 8 quick connects, uh, flexible line, just like many of you seen on the crusher cart. Um, I find this stuff to be very, very uh, handy and it's easy to use and it doesn't leak. It works great. So anyway, um, I think I got all the details covered. A lot of people ask me how strong is that cylinder? To be quite honest, I don't know. I do know that this particular cylinder can handle 250 PSI, okay? I run my little guy and the uh, crusher cart at 120 PSI, which is sufficient for crushing cans. Um, if it's something really thick, like a Foster's Lager can, I'm not sure if it'll crush it or not, plus that's a really big can. So anyway, um, for, for its practical purpose, I use it for 12 ounce cans, soda cans, beer cans, whatever, um, and it's pretty effective. Um, we, like I said, the bigger one, you can do the 24 ounce, uh, like Arizona iced tea cans and the 24 ounce be, uh, beer cans, and even the, um, the, the aluminum beer bottles, it'll crush those as well. Uh, my small one, only 12 ounce cans, that's it. Let's get to building this thing. Basically, we're gonna take this tube, which I measured out to be uh, 15 and a quarter inches. And the reason I picked that length is because when the cylinder's closed, your puck is gonna be right here. And when it's full open, it's gonna not bottom out, but it's gonna come close to the very end of this tube when it's fully, fully out. So essentially, we're gonna turn this basically into this, okay? Um, I'm not going to use this one because I think that this is going to be a weak, weak point. So I want to make this a little wider right here. So I'm going to go from half inch to one inch right here. So essentially, this is what we're going to create. And how I do that, I'll show you. I determine how big my opening is going to be. And I just mark it out. Basically, just mark it out with a Sharpie. Draw a line on each side. And I like my, um, my corners to be rounded. So I'm gonna, um, the, the, this is just a pre-drill right here for a half inch drill bit. And that's gonna give me this nice little radius right here. So I'm gonna drill all four of these. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a bar here. Uh, we'll, we'll get to it. And then we're gonna just plasma cut this opening because plasma cut seems to be the quickest way to to get through this material and this is 3 8 it's totally overkill quarter inch is sufficient believe me so i've gone ahead pre-drilled marked everything out uh, this is my front and my back cuts right here uh, we're going to go over to the mill and drill these out i also wanted to mention i've been using these die mide clamps um, i gotta thank the guys over there they sent me two of their quarter impacts and one of their number five i love these clamps man these things work fantastic couple of the other viewers got them and did some nice videos on them I haven't had a chance yet and the reason is I want to use these things I want to put them to use and then I want to give you my feedback on them 
Uh, the quarter impact, of course, takes a quarter inch bit for a little impact gun. Uh, very handy, quick, quick to use. This one has the uh, copper, uh, uh, copper adjusting uh, rod in here uh, with the copper jaws. Um, they included a set of aluminum jaws for the quarters. Uh, I love these things. I mean, man, they clamp hard. They, they're really nice clamps. Well made, well designed, well thought out. Anyway, I had to throw that in there real quick. I'll do a full review on it sometime in the near future here. Got the pipe all drilled out, uh, half inch holes on all four corners. Um, as you can see, they're a little offset. And basically I did that because this pipe is not gonna be cut exactly in the middle. I'm gonna give it a little bit of an edge here. Now these holes are drilled straight because as you saw when it was in the mill, this line was straight up and down. So that way uh, when this opening is opened, uh, the, the sill plates will be flat. So I, I got it uh, clamped back down. I have the Dymide number five clamp holding this piece of two inch bar. And this is gonna be my guide for the plasma cutter. Hopefully we're gonna make a nice smooth cut here. So let's fire up the thermal dynamics and uh, cut this bad boy. Here we go. Here's a tighter shot of the cut. We probably have a little bit of slag on the inside, but it'll knock right off. Uh, whenever you can use a, a guide, uh, it sure makes your cuts a lot nicer. Damn, just like that. Okay, I got it in the bandsaw and I got my holes uh, canted for the angle of the blade, so that way when I drop into the opening, uh, it, it'll have clearance on both sides. Sorry for the background noise. I've had a uh, fan going the whole time I've been working on this and I'm sure you can hear it, so I apologize for that. It's been over 100 degrees for good, well over 28 days here and man, it just take, it takes its toll on you. Anyway, um, I gave these parts a quick media blast and now we're gonna pre-assemble so we can center the cylinder into the crushing cylinder. Nice snug fit. Again, inch and a half, 12. For this style cylinder, I know my other one's a little smaller. So that's going to go on there like that. And then the puck, uh, 5 8 18, I believe. 
is going to go on the rod. There we go. All right, so basically I'm centering uh, this sleeve exactly in the middle of the puck here. So basically it doesn't touch any of the walls inside the cylinder. It just rides freely on the inside. So it looks like I got it pretty much centered up here. Perfect, didn't move. All right, now I'm marking for this piece to be cut out. Uh, this is where the cans and plastic bottles are going to basically exhaust or fall out of. So uh, I'm gonna kind of eye this because I wanna make sure I have enough meat in here for strength. Um, if it's a little too much, I might just come up a little bit, give it a little bit more meat. So this opening's gonna be an inch and a half and it's gonna be just below center line of this uh, three inch ID tubing. So I should have enough meat in here for strength. Okay, got that cut out. Let's clean it up a little bit. I purposely left a little extra material on both end plates so I could just fusion weld it right in. Saves time, saves material, um, and it flowed right in there beautifully. Paint is dry, time for final assembly. Let's do this. Two and three sixteenth socket for that nut. Okay, that baby's tight. This air cylinder has a really unique feature that I've never seen before, and it's got a built-in soft start and stop. I really like that because my little one, it slams. This one doesn't. As you can see, it's at the end of its travel, it's a soft. I like that. What the heck? Oh, wait a minute. I got this. I hope you enjoyed the Can Crusher build, so until next time, see ya!